A denial of service attack, or DOS for short, occurs to prevent someone from using services that they would otherwise be able to use. As we described in some of the previous slides, there are various methods on how to perform a denial of service attack, but the outcome is essentially the same in that the victim can't use the system that they would have otherwise. Another type of DOS attack is the Distributed Denial of Service Attack, or DDoS for short. A DOS and DDoS are essentially the same thing, however the scale and scope of the attack can be much greater with a DDoS attack, since the amount of resources available for the attack are much larger. Originally, DOS attacks were used to aggravate victims, but there wasn't much else to gain out of them. But DDoS attacks have become a business model. What drives the DDoS market are the botnets that DDoS providers build through the creation of bots or zombies, which become part of the attack. Typically, users don't even know their systems are part of a botnet. One last word on caution is that an organization should take care not to DOS themselves with some of their scanning activities. It isn't uncommon when establishing a vulnerability management program for an overzealous security analyst to scan large ranges of IP addresses, which may or may not actually exist. Depending on your organization's network architecture and the configuration on your firewalls to limit half embryonic connections related to SIN flooding I mentioned previously, IP addresses that aren't being used by systems could get forwarded through your firewalls in search of those addresses, filling up the connections that your firewalls support ultimately preventing your firewalls from accepting connections from legitimate systems and ultimately dosing yourself.